Hey, it's Mark Podolsky at The Land Geek with your favorite niche real estate website, thelandgeek.com. And on this week's Art of Passive Income podcast, I have my good friend, Jamie Bateman from Labrador Lending. Now, if you're not familiar with Jamie, he is the founder and uh, of Labrador Lending and has been active in real estate since 2010. And he started buying and selling mortgage notes since early 2018. And he's acquired over 75 mortgage notes with principal balances in excess of over $4 million with collateral across 20 states and growing. He owns several small businesses in a multi-state rental portfolio with over worth over $30.5 million. So he's also uh, was a company commander and a captain of the US Army. Jamie, thank you for your service. Um, Sorry. And uh, he was deployed in Iraq. So, Jamie Bateman, welcome. Thanks, Mark. I really appreciate you having me, and I'm hoping to uh, add some value to your listeners today. Yeah. So, let's just rewind the tape a bit. And sure. how did you go from, you know, Department of Defense into mm-hmm. business and real estate? Well, I had it all mapped out when I was five years old. And <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, that's not true. I um, was able to work part-time for the Department of Defense while I was building kind of my my side hustles. Um, And so I worked full-time at DOD for about seven years and then worked uh, another seven years part-time and was able to have health insurance and benefits for my family while I was able to kind of slowly grow uh, my, my outside uh, businesses. And so didn't do the rip off the bandaid approach until this, this past year, about a year ago um, now, um, and quit my W-2 in March of 2022, which we can talk about. But um, yeah, how I got into real estate was uh, I worked for a title company back in the day. My, my father was a real estate agent. My brother was a loan officer. So kind of knew, had some fundamental knowledge regarding a residential real estate. My wife and I ha- have had a rental for quite some time. And then in 2015, really started to get serious about the investing side of things. Yeah, let's let's just because you brought it up, let's talk <laughs> about the the plan of quitting your W two and mm-hmm. what that was like for you. Sure. So, in case uh, your listeners were confused, I haven't had it all planned out since five years old, but. Um, I did have the luxury of of a little bit more time than maybe some people do uh, with regard to the transition away from a W-2. And so uh, everyone's circumstances are different and there's no one size fits all approach. Um, I knew that I didn't want to stay in my my W-2 forever. Uh, you know, that was certainly something I just, every year that went by, you know, I became uh, less and less passionate about my day job, which I'm sure your listeners can relate to just the commute and all that stuff and just the kind of groundhog day thing and so much red tape, especially working for for the government. Um, And so what I did was instead of, so so for several years, I, you know, when you have small kids and you're building your family, I'm sure some of your listeners can relate to that where you don't even have time to think about what's next. And so there was a period of time, probably in my thirties where that's that's why I just put my head down and kind of, you know, uh, worked my W-2, but then um, decided to take, I think it was around 2014, 2015, I really made a mindset shift. And um, I know I uh, had you on my podcast and we talked a lot about mindset, but but and the importance of that. And I started to, instead of feeling sorry for myself and saying, oh, my, my life sucks. I've got this long commute. Every day's the same, you know, I have no free time. I started using my commute time to listen to podcasts, Bigger Pockets, and many others, and started to gain knowledge. And so, what happens is your your mindset shifts, and you start to realize you have a lot more control than you think. And so, I started to put into place um, a plan to eventually leave my W two, and I can certainly talk about how I actually ended up doing that, um, which I, I still find somewhat amusing but i did not oh, yeah i mean since you since you bring it up let's, <laughs> let, let's hear the story let's do it so if you so here's what happened about six seven years into working part-time at uh and, and 
I worked, you know, I had a top secret clearance, all that stuff. And, you know, it sounds cool, but ultimately I was working at a, I, I had a desk job and I was editing reports. It wasn't anything super thrilling. So I knew I was going to leave. It was just a matter of, of timing for the family and everything. But what happened was I ended up um, injuring myself about, let's say 16 months ago, ruptured my Achilles, was out of work for, I couldn't drive for a couple months, two, three months. And so I, I had the taste of not going to my W-2, right? And so um, I knew I was going to leave. It was just a matter of when. And I talked talked this all over with my wife. It wasn't just me being a cowboy necessarily, but um, come back into work after this extended period of time. And <laughs> I, I don't know if you've seen Office Space where the guy gets moved to the basement and he's got his red stapler and all that stuff. Where's my red stapler? <laughs> exactly. So... Man, I walk up to what I thought was my desk, and I don't think I've told this story on a podcast, so uh, this will this will be fun. But I walk up to what what had been my desk, and I and I find some. It was a young military guy, and I said, "You don't know who I am, I I don't think, but this was my desk. I'm curious if you have any idea where where I sit now, you know." And and um, he just kind of shrugged me off and kept typing. So. Um, then I finally walk around. I walk around the office. I finally found find a a box with my name on it, with a couple of monitors that were kind of you know sagging. And and um, my first thought was I should grab that box, head out to my car, and never come back. Um, now I would have to make sure there was nothing classified in there. And um, but the reality is I quit that day, and I said I'm done. I I you know and and they're a huge organization. The, I was just a number. They don't, you know, they don't care. But um, I knew then and there I was done and I never looked back. Now I did come back into work. I just, you know, <laughs> didn't just leave that day and never come back. But um, it was so, it was so clear to me that was the right decision at the time. So that's, that's a, a amazing. And <laughs> it, it didn't seem, I mean, I, I you'd already laid the groundwork financially yes, correct. to be able to to quit your W-2. And I'm assuming then you had already replaced your income with passive income from real estate. Yeah. I mean, close, it was close to it. Close. It was close. And you can get into the whole, what is passive? And, you know, um, I definitely had a lot more income than I, uh, than I otherwise would have. Right. And, and I do, the thing is, if someone has a full-time job and they're building their, their side hustle, their passive income, then they quit their W-2. There's always a loss in income. I mean, so there is a loss in income because I no longer have my W-2, right? But I did have more time and more focus. And what I had found was that over those seven years where I was building my, my real estate investing and mortgage note investing portfolio and businesses, I found that that's where my heart was. And so, you know, I, I wasn't as effective and committed effective at and committed to my day job as I had been previously. And so I reached a crossroads mentally where I said, look, I can reinvent myself here for, for DOD and, and really go all in and, and kind of give them what honestly they deserve, you know, um, or I can just, just call it quits. And, and that's what I did. So yes, I, I had been actively and my wife and I, my wife was a big part of it as well building up our, our businesses on the side, our, our rental portfolio. And then now we have, I have a couple of mortgage note funds that I run. And then we also started a loan servicing company that we can get into. But um, I have a lot more going on on the active and passive side outside of the W-2, um, which allowed me to make that decision to leave. Yeah. You would be the first person on this podcast with a mortgage note fund. So there, let's there talk about what is a mortgage note and what is a mortgage note fund and sure. why should people invest in them? Absolutely. So I know you're, you're a lot of your listeners are very familiar with land investing and- uh, The sexiest of all niches. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> if, <laughs> you're entitled to your opinion, Mark. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> So I know you. I know you all. Uh, I, I haven't actually really gotten into to land investing, but I know you do create either land contracts or notes on uh, the land sometimes when you sell on terms. So mortgage notes 
really are not any different. It's just the mortgage notes that we buy are typically uh, on single family residential owner occupied properties. So the high level overview is that we buy both performing and non-performing mortgage notes. And I'm not going to try not to get too far into the weeds here, but uh, we buy notes that are already originated. So a lender would have originated a mortgage note to a borrower. Okay. So we buy that debt and we become the lender. We become the bank. We buy notes where the borrower is paying and for we buy those for cash flow. And that I think most people can kind of understand that. Uh, you buy those for a yield and a monthly payment. We also buy non-performing mortgage notes, which are more like a fix and flip property or distressed property where you're you're buying something that has distress to it and you're adding value to that. And so lots of little rabbit trails we could go down, but essentially we're becoming the bank, becoming the lender, buying that debt, and the borrower is now now owes us uh, payments. And so there are many uh, ways to make money through this. And we have both a non-performing note fund and a performing note fund um, that that I uh, oversee. So, so why do you think you're the first person to be on this podcast? I've been doing this a long time <laughs> to have a note fund, and why? So why do you think it's such an overlooked niche? And what do you love about it? And what makes it hard? Sure. Great questions. Um, it is definitely a niche within a niche, right? So I think that's the, the the first answer is it's just, it's a very small space. There really aren't too many people doing it. And you start to get to know most of the people in the, in, in this space. Um, and so I wasn't aware of it either. What, what happened was I was, I kind of had checked the box with regard to single family rentals and, and kind of got a little bit bored with it, to be honest with you. And I said, okay, I understand this now. It's, it's cool. I like them They're you know, but I wanted something different. So I started researching mortgage note investing and tax lien investing. I don't know if you've had a, I could get you a tax lien expert. I, I've that. talked to my tax <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so, but I think, you know, it is, it is definitely a niche within the, the real estate, um, single family niche. And, um, and there aren't, you know, th there aren't that many, um, Deal flow has been a challenge recently, so so you could argue the opportunity hasn't been what it maybe was a few years ago, although I think that's starting to change. Um, but no, it's it's I think the the most people just don't know about it, honestly. Um, and you know you can get into all kinds of niches within this niche of seller finance notes, second versus first position notes, performing versus non-performing. You can buy notes that are not mortgage notes, like car notes and things, um, anything that's, that's debt. So, uh, yeah, I'm ha happy to be the first one on the show. I mean, that's, that's exciting. That's awesome. So what do you love about it? Yeah. Um, you can do this from anywhere. You can absolutely be a note investor from anywhere. And now we do have a couple of teenage kids and, and, uh, reasons we're kind of somewhat tied down, you know, on, on my personal side of things, but you can, if you have a, a an internet connection and a telephone, a cell phone, you can, you can do mortgage notes. Um, another thing I love about is, is the collateral. Wait, so, Jamie, don't, don't we need money <laughs> to, to buy mortgage notes? You do need money. And so I do actually recommend most people, if you want to get into this and you can, ultimately you're going to decide if your listener out there is, is saying, I want to check this out. You know, it's no different than yeah, I know you have the done for you land investing model. That's probably pretty similar to our fund model where it's mostly passive. And so, uh, but you can absolutely go the more active route as a note investor and, and kind of, you know, you're not physically, it's not a physically demanding thing, but uh, it's, it's not quite as passive as investing in a note fund or the done for you land flipping model. Um, so, I do recommend most you start off with your own money to answer your question, but at some point you're going to run out of your own money or the capital that you have allocated to this this venture. And so you do need to figure out how to use other people's money, how to access other people's money to scale your note business um, for sure. So the three three parts to the note business, other people's money or access to capital, that's one. Number two is access to deals, notes. 
And then number three is the asset management, and which is, I know you're you're familiar with all three on the land side for sure. Yeah. I mean, it's not too different from from the land business in the sense that we were creating notes and mm -hmm. we'll, we actually buy land notes. Mm -hmm. We, we mm -hmm. love land notes. And when you sell a land note, the math makes a lot of sense because sure. then you, you get your cash out and you redeploy it and because of our, our huge margins. It makes yeah. a lot of sense. Now, emotionally, a lot of people don't want to sell their notes because mm -hmm. they don't want to take that uh, passive income hit, which I totally get. But when you do the math, it it's the best way for them to raise capital. Mm -hmm. But that, that being uh, one part of it, but mm -hmm. for you, as far as you've got to raise capital, yeah, you've got to source the deal and you've right. got to manage it. So of those three... Mm -hmm. Which is the most challenging and which is the one you're like, yeah, let's go. <laughs> I actually enjoy the asset management. I'm, I'm familiar with, um, you know, residential real estate and, and, and it, so I do think, um, if you're familiar with real estate itself, that gives you a big leg up in mortgage note investing because the, the real estate is the collateral. And that's another thing that's great about mortgage note investing. You do have a collateral, just like the land is on a land note. Um, but so that's a huge plus for mortgage note investing. Um, it, and so I, the asset management, I actually enjoy, um, capital raising, there's been a lot of there's a lot of capital out there still looking for home uh, uh you know looking for yield looking for a home and that part um is somewhat new i, I would say of the three those are the, that's the the one piece that i'm uh learning still i mean we've we've um you know the, the, i've had i have two note funds and we started the the first one about a year and a half almost two years ago now Prior to that, I was using, I was working with other people's capital through joint ventures and selling of partials, which is a whole, probably three episodes in and of itself. Um, but so I would say the hardest, uh, the, the one that I like the most is asset management. The one that's been the biggest challenge, and I think this is mostly for, because of just market conditions recently, is deal flow. Um, and so access to the notes themselves that has started to open up some here in the last six months, I, I would say. And, you know, that's a million dollar question is, is where do you find these notes? Right. And it's very much a relationship business. It's very much an inefficient marketplace. There's no, oh, here are all the notes you, you want to buy, you know, so um, we have a, a list of note brokers and, and note sources and smaller hedge funds and uh, note larger note funds, larger than ours, who um, sell notes at any given time. So there are there are ways to get, you know, and then what you do is if you close, people come back to you, note sellers will come back to you because you actually did what you said you were going to do. So um, I know I, I rambled a little bit there, um, but uh, I think that my favorite is the asset management piece and my least favorite is probably sourcing deals. And if I wanted to invest in your fund or the listeners wanted to invest in their fund, why should they, and what should they be expecting? Sure. Great question. Um, we, so m the only fund we have open right now is our income fund, which is a monthly cash flow play. And it is for accredited investors only. And so, what hey, can they you should... define real quickly what, what an accredited investor is? Yeah, um, I, I guess it's two. I'm trying to think. It's two hundred fifty thousand dollars income if you're single, and is it three fifty if you're if you're I think, married? Yeah, I, I think remember. it's two two fifty of income if you're single, at three fifty if you're married, and then yeah, a million in, million dollars in my worth your residential home, excluding your primary residence. Exactly. So. And there are some other, there's some more fine print to, to read. Um, yeah. <laughs> but those are the big, the, they, they, the they want you to be a somewhat, uh, yeah, educated, investor, and, educated exactly. investor. You can For lose sure. money and you're fine. <laughs> and the, the thing is, I, I like working with non accredited investors, but the way, but I don't, I don't write the laws. And so, um, it just made business sense for us to go the accredited route only. But, um, the fund that's open right now, which is actually closing at the end of March, is 
uh, for accredited investors and it's a monthly cash flow play. So there's, you know, just like anything, there are pros and cons, right? There are pros and cons to this note fund. Uh, some of the cons are that uh, there's no upside. I mean, there's no upside potential. Um, this is a boring cash flow play. If you're looking for an 8% yield and you want something that's backed by hard physical real estate, this is a great option. And the other couple of other quick you know, benefits um, quickly are that the your money is, is collateralized across assets in many different states. So we buy, we've actually bought in 25 to 30 states and um, and then your your capital is also spread across multiple notes, multiple borrowers. So not all of your your money is put into one mortgage note. And so you're kind of spreading your risk. And in this, you know, this these times of uncertainty, it may not be the worst uh, the worst option for someone who doesn't want to roll up their sleeves and learn note investing, but they want they have capital and they want to put it to work. They want to you know do better than a, a savings account or a CD. Um, and the other thing is, it's only a twelve month commitment, so you can get your capital back uh, rather quickly. So. Um, our other note fund is not open right now, but, and we'll probably do another non-performing note fund at some point. And so um, those are some of the downsides and benefits of of our funds. Yeah. I mean, I can imagine, I mean, we're in the passive income mastermind group together with, yeah. with Russ and Joey and Sharon, and they're all accredited investors. But I can imagine if I have this infinite banking policy and I can borrow at 5%, pay back interest only over a year. And if I'm doing it through a business, I can even deduct it. So maybe it's 3%. I'm making 8%. I get my back money back in a year. I then pay back my policy. I then yeah. pay my premiums. I mean, it's not the worst strategy. Right. Uh, and it's, you know, the risk reward ratio makes a lot of sense versus, you know, some other play where you might get higher yield, but you may not get your money back that quickly. Yeah. yeah, and you may not love the asset that's underlying it either. Exactly. Yeah, and like a like a typical multifamily syndication, which is a fine option, and I've invested in those those projects as well. But it's it's normally one one asset, one actual property usually, and it, you may get your money back in five to seven years. And so it's a very different different play there. So um, y y there's more potential for upside there, but it's a you're, you're not getting a monthly monthly check. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, well, Jamie, your your mentorship about note investing has been <laughs> invaluable, but we are now at that point in the podcast where I'm going to ask you for your tip of the week, a website, okay. a resource, a book, something else actionable for the art of passive income listeners to go improve their businesses and improve their lives. But before you do that, I have to give a shout out to our sponsor, which is Flight School. Learn how the next 16 weeks can transform your life. Go up that mountain of land investing quickly, safely, efficiently with Scott Todd as your Sherpa. Start making that passive income without renters, rehabs, renovations, or rodents. Go to thelandgeek.com forward slash training. I know what you're thinking. Well, how much is this investment going to be? It ain't going to cost you nothing. Guaranteed you're going to make it back 180 days or less. Just show us your work. So go to thelandgeek.com forward slash trading. Jamie Bateman, what is your tip of the week? So I'm pretty sure not only will I have been the first mortgage note investor on your show, but I highly doubt anyone gave this tip Okay. Uh, so far. So it's a book. I had a, a guest on my podcast. His name is uh, James Harold Webb and his book is Redneck Resilience. Uh, that's the, it's a, a country boy's journey to prosperity. I'm almost done the book and it's fascinating. It's about his own his own life and his own story. And there are many ups and downs in his entrepreneurial journey and he's done very, very well, but he's also faced a ton of personal adversity that he talks about in that book. So um, Redneck Resilience, A Country Boy's Journey to Prosperity this is the book I recommend. James Harold Webb. Wow. Well, it can make an introduction for me, brother. Absolutely. I, I want to get him on the podcast. Yeah. That's fantastic. No, he's great. He's fantastic. I will. That'd be great. Well, that's a good tip of the week. But a little different, my, right? My yeah, my tip of the week is actually going to make you money. Okay. Um, 
my tip of the week is learn more about Jamie and his funds and his podcast. Go to labradorlending.com, labradorlending.com. And for those of you that might look at loan servicing, uh, he's got a little loan servicing button here yep. as well. Buy fi buy fi loan servicing. Buy investors fully for investors, a fully compliant licensed mortgage or servicing company for private note investors. Um, I love it. So you can take land notes, Mark. <laughs> fantastic. Well, I mean, I've got geekpay.io if you want help with the software as far as uh, managing the actual math and the- yeah, I wouldn't mind talking to you it. about that later. <laughs> yeah. So um, labradorlending.com. Jamie Baven, are we good? We are good. I do. I do. Uh, I say we're good and then I keep talking. I do a uh, mentorship for the more active note investor who wants to learn learn how to be a note investor as well. So thank you so much, Mark. This has been fantastic. I, I'm uh, hopeful and confident that your audience uh, will benefit from this episode. I'm more than hopeful. I am confident. And I, speaking of the audience, I just want to remind you that the only way, the only way I'm going to get the quality of guests like a Jamie Bateman from labradorlending.com is if you do three little favors, follow, rate, review the podcast, send us a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. I'm going to send you a signed copy of Dirt Rich, which might be worth something one day. Who knows? But even if you don't want the book, it just helps us. And guests like Jamie look at our ratings and say, oh, they got a lot of ratings. I'll definitely go on that podcast. So it helps you. It helps us. So just please do it. All right. Well, as I always end, let freedom reign. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for listening to the Art of Passive Income podcast. Are you ready to learn how you can start building a passive income without renters, rehabs, renovations, or rodents? Schedule a free consultation at thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Let freedom ring.